In this tutorial, you'll learn how to solve quadratic equations by using the factored form or by factoring yourself. So GCF, difference of two squares, trinomials, and grouping are all ways that you can factor a problem. What we'll focus on today is trinomials only because that's what we've been working with lately. So here's an example of a factored polynomial. So these polynomials are factored form, which means that they are two things that multiply together. So that's what factors are. Two things that multiply together to give you a product. Now for all of our examples today, that product is going to be zero, always. And if it's not a zero, you need to make it a zero. But I won't try and make this confusing. So today, I'll give you all zeros. Now here's the deal. If I tell you that I'm multiplying two mystery numbers and that the answer is zero, if I told you that the first mystery number was a three, what does the other mystery number have to be? Well, it would have to be a zero because that's the only way to get an answer of zero. So if I told you that I'm thinking of two numbers and when you multiply them together, the answer is zero. If this one is zero, then what's this number? The answer is it could be anything because this is going to automatically cause the answer to be zero. So for our sentences today, I know that either this one has to be a zero or this one has to be a zero because that's the only way to get a product of zero. So right now my sentence says, I'm thinking of a mystery number and I want you to add three to it. Well, if I told you the answer had to be zero, then the only mystery number it could be is negative three because negative three plus three is zero. But if I told you this factor was zero, then what number has to be in here to make that sentence a zero? Well, hopefully you're understanding your inverses and you recognize that it would have to be a five. So here's the rule. If the product is zero, one of the factors must be zero. So one of these factors must be zero. So watch how I translate that. One of these factors, either the first one has to be equal to zero or the second one has to be equal to zero. So you see what I just did there? I took factor number one and set it up as its own equation equal to zero. Then I took factor number two and set it up as its own equation and made it equal to zero because one of these has to be zero. I'm going to use some inverse operations here. And I actually don't need these parentheses because there's nothing to multiply. So if I subtract three, then the answer would be, oops, negative three. But on this second sentence, the answer would be positive five, which I already kind of figured out earlier, right? So the solutions are that X can be negative three or it can be positive five. Now, when we have more than one answer, we typically separate them with a comma. And then we put these fancy curly braces around it. Now you could leave it like that. Or you could say, whoops, next, sorry. Or you could say X is equal to either negative three or positive five. So here's what you're going to do. Take each of your two factors, separate them into their own equations, and get x by itself. That's all you need to do. Take a look at another example. Remember, if it's equal to zero, if the product is equal to zero, then one of these factors has to be equal to zero. Again, you can leave the parentheses off because there's nothing in front. So when you solve for x, you'll get your two answers. Put both of your answers next to each other with a comma in between and braces around the outside. That's it. X can be two and the product would be zero or if X was seven, the product would be zero. If I plug in a two here and a two here, I get zero times negative five. Yep, that checks. If I plug in a seven here and a seven here, 
I get 5 times 0, and that's also true. It's equal to 0. So I know that my solutions work. Let's try it again. If you have two factors and the product is 0, either the first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. Do your inverse operations. Write your final answers. Separate them with a comma. Put curly braces around the side. That's it. One more. If two factors have a product of zero, either the first factor is zero or the second factor is zero. Now there's not much math to this. Most of you can probably jump right to the answer without using your inverse properties. Now the answer I just wrote is correct, but typically they're written in ascending order, or least to greatest. So both of these are correct, but if it was a multiple choice test, like say on the Regents exam, the answer would probably be this one here. This one wouldn't even be listed. This is how they would list the answers. But if it was a short answer, you would be right either way. All right, I think you're ready to try a few on your own. Here's three problems at the level I just taught you, and then I give you a fourth one as a challenge. Pause the video and see how you do. All right, did you try them? Let's take a look. What do you think about that challenge question? You ready to try some of those? All right, let me show you how to do them. Again, if you have two factors with a product of zero, set them up as their own separate equations. Either the first product is zero or the second product is zero. Use your inverse operations, and this time you have to use two of them and sometimes your answer will be a fraction. And that's okay. I don't want any decimals, I don't want any mixed numbers. Leave it in fraction form. Same with the second one. After you use both of your inverses, leave it in fraction form. If you'd like to list your answers together, you use curly braces and you generally go from smallest to largest. That's the final answer. All right, one last problem. Two factors that have a product of zero means you have two separate sentences. You use your inverse operations. I'm gonna skip that step here because I think you're doing all right. This one would lead us to two X equals and minus or negative eight. Divide both sides by two. And I actually get a whole number this time. Not too shabby. Actually, these two answers match. So technically, there's only one solution. All right, give these two a try. Pause the video. You ready to check your answers? Here we go. Great job.